those soybeans. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today is the 27th day of June, 2013. Um, it is a Thursday. Partners meeting tonight. Reminder for all the partners. Partners meeting. Um, also a reminder to anyone who is on the free trial, if you want to become a partner, uh, you should have something in your inbox right now. If you are on the free trial today, you should have something in your inbox right now. Um, take a look at it. If you need any help with it, give me a call. All right. I believe my phone number is in there somewhere. Um, all right. So we are recording. All right. The results for today, we were plus three on soybeans. We were plus 23 on crude oil. We're plus 18 on gold and plus seven on copper. All right. That brought our total for the month to $4,740 per contract. And I think I'm going to, hopefully tomorrow we'll hit five grand per contract. I didn't think we were going to hit the 62.92 level. We got off, I don't want to say we got off to a slow start this month, but we had a couple of slow days this month. Uh, you know, there was rollover month. We had, we rolled over a bunch of things. As a matter of fact, we rolled over, uh, we rolled over natural gas this morning, but it was a big rollover month. And so we we didn't make sixty two hundred dollars per contract this month. I'm looking for five grand per contract tomorrow, hopefully. Um this morning it took us six minutes and one trade to get to our one hundred dollar per contract goal of the day. All right. Six minutes and one trade. Um we took a total of twelve trades today. If you take if you use an eight dollar round turn commission and you apply that to every single trade we've taken so far this month, all 226 trades we've taken so far this month in the live trading room, you would still be uh, net a plus $2,932 gain per contract in the live trading room. All right. And, you know, that's when I'm trading eight different markets and, you know, answering questions from hundreds of people. You guys should actually be doing better than that. Though today, you know, we had a really good day today. We're up $535 per contract. Um... On the days where I'm not up great, like, you know, yesterday, I just made it. I just made the break-even. Of course, we had a 40-minute delay yesterday morning because of the charts. But the day before that, I had just made, you know, I just made the two points. You know, this week hasn't been a stellar week as far as getting the two points. We did get it every day. But on those days, you, you guys should be doing much better than I am. Because you do not, or should not be missing the trades that I'm missing. All right, so today, let's just start right off with crude oil, okay? That was our our first trade of the day was in crude. That's where we hit our two points early on. And it was right here. Right here, our very first trade of the morning right here was a down close. Um, down close right in here. Uh, we shorted the crude, and we took 10 ticks profit right there. Okay, the market changed directions, moved up. We got long the crude over here, and we took 7 ticks profit on that one. We got long again over here, and we took some more profit on that one. Um, we're up 23 ticks on crude, so we, I guess we took 6 ticks profit on that. And I'd, Looks like I had one more break-even trade. Was it on the crude? Yeah, that's it. One more break-even trade right in here is all I took. Um, it's not to say that there weren't more opportunities. There were right in here. There was a long trade um, over here. I think there might have been some room for a long trade. But it got flat in here, and that's when I had drawn in these these uh, boxes in here, and I said it needed to break out of those boxes. And once it did, I got long again. I ended up taking a break even on this trade. I missed this one. Uh, I missed this up here, but that was at the end of the morning session. Okay, during the break, uh, I got flat in here, and right now it's actually short. It's uh, given shorting opportunities. I believe if I blow this up, we should have been short on that orange bar. Enjoy your trend line up. The down close is right there, bearish divergence. The spot to get short would have been right there. Okay, that's what we had on crude. I'm going to go through these markets quickly because I know Mike's out there waiting, and he came in the other day, and and we couldn't get him going. So on the Russell, I had a couple of trades on the Russell. Okay, I had a loss. That was you no, know, what Dwayne was saying earlier about me um, making the two points and then giving it right back. I made the two points here on the crude. And that was after the first six minutes. And then I gave it right back, right here. All right. I took a long trade over here on the Russell, and I lost eight ticks on that trade right there. Okay. I didn't trade the Russell again for a while. There were some trading opportunities in here. I missed them all until I got this one over here. And I took eight ticks profit on that, and that put me a break-even on the Russell. 
That was my last trade on the Russell this morning. All right, there was a shorting opportunity in here, then it changed directions, and you wouldn't need a bullish divergence, but it got into the weekly trading zone, so you're not going long. All right, that is the Russell this morning. Um, Paul, if I look closely at my trend line on the first Russell trade, I entered one bar too late, in your opinion. Well, let's look closely. On uh, my first Russell trade, it, it's probably... Well, I entered on the up close of this bar. On this one, this is you know, this is borderline right here because it was a close right at the trend line. You know, my trend line's drawn pretty well right there. It was a close right at the trend line. If I would have gotten in at this one right here, I might have taken a little bit of profit. I would have gotten a break even at worst. I wouldn't have stopped out. But, you know, I waited for the up close above there for the continuation. And unfortunately, it didn't give me anything. But remember yesterday when you and I talked, how it flattened out in the middle? Remember? Um, the line should come down in the middle of the bar. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now in the recap. It, it, it may very well do that, Paul. It may very well come right down in the middle. I'm sure if you say it does, it does. Um, but I traded what I traded. You know, when it's right on the bar like that, that's not really a close up above. It's a close at. And, you know, if you have a lot of momentum in the market, then that's, that's one of those opportunities where you, you, know, you, have to make a, you have to make a decision about whether you're going to take it or not. And if there's a lot of momentum and it closes right at the trend line, then maybe you're willing to take that. I don't think we had a lot of momentum at that time. Um, it was, you know, it was the first, well, it was right in the first 15 minutes anyway. Anyway, let's jump on to the next market, okay? Because I don't want to, I don't want to delay my greed's time. Um, all right, this is gold. We took, you yeah, know, we took a few trades here on gold. Um, let's see. Gold had a bunch of opportunities that I missed. It was a nice one right here, a beautiful trade right here on gold. It was a perfect opportunity. came together just right. Had another one right here, another one right here, another one right here. This is finally one we got into over here. We took a little bit of profit on it. Um, we missed a couple more in here. Now, when I say we missed these trades, I mean we actually really missed them. We didn't, we didn't see them happen, or I wasn't able to put my order on fast enough, or whatever. But there was... This trade right here is about 20 ticks. This is about 20 ticks. This is about 20 ticks. This is about 20 ticks. Let's see, 20, 40, 60, 80. That's $800 per contract. Let's say you cut that in half and you only get 10. That's $400 per contract. And then I got this one over here. Um, I only took 4 ticks profit on this, but that went about 10 ticks. There's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um... Gary, I would say it's a disadvantage. The question was, is it an advantage or disadvantage to use momentum bars instead of range bars? I would say it's a disadvantage because you can have gaps in momentum bars. You don't get gaps in the range bars. Um, okay, right here, you see there was another opportunity there and there that I missed. Um, this is one that I took over here, I believe. I got eat ticks profit out of this one right here. Um, I missed the follow-up right there. I missed another one here. I took some profit on this one over here. I think I took six ticks profit out of that. And I missed another one in there. I had drawn this box in there. I don't remember why I drew the box. Maybe because it was consolidating. Uh, but there was an opportunity to short out of that. And another short right here. This one would have lost. Okay, out of all the ones that I pointed out so far, this one right here would have lost. There was another opportunity to short here that would have won. Another there that would have won. Another there that would have won. Um, in here, this would have been a break-even. Okay, and that was pretty much the end of the morning session. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me, Frank. Um, and, and that pretty much would have been the end of the morning session. Um, right in here, there's another opportunity on the long side, but that was during the break. Uh, let's see where we are right now. Right now, we pulled back up, tested the BBC. Let me blow this up for you so you can see it a little better. Okay. We pulled back up and tested the BBC with bearish divergence and a red cycle. So you just needed the down close. So the short would have been from right there. Okay, the short would have been from right there at 29.2. And that drop from 29.2 down to 28. That's $120 a contract right there. All right, just wanted to show that to you. Now, let's jump over here. We traded copper and soybeans. So let's look at the soybeans first. 
I believe, on the beans. We only had this one trade on the beans right here. We shorted the down close right here, and we took three ticks profit on the trade. It went farther than that, but I had moved my stop down plus a few ticks. Okay. Um, does the news affect my trading decisions? It doesn't affect my decisions, uh, other than the decision not to trade while the news is coming out. That's th the only decision that it would make. You know, I I don't say, okay, well, you know, like today is a good example. Um, you know, we had, what was it, housing starts or something like that. We had some some bullish information that came out. And you would think that the market's going to go up based on bullish information, but the market actually went down initially based on the bullish bullish information. Bullish information. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's... I, I don't care whether it's going up or down as long as it's moving one way or the other. You know, I trade what's in front of me. I don't, I don't trade, I don't trade what I hear. I trade what I see, if that makes sense to you. Um, that's, you know, technical traders. That's what we do, not fundamental. <laughs> I can't say that word, Lori. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it, it kind of seemed like it almost fell out of my mouth, though, didn't it? <laughs> um, all right, what are we on? We're on soybeans. Uh, we were looking for another opportunity in the soybeans. I didn't take this one. I didn't like the way that it came together. We'll go over this in the partners meeting tonight. Um, I was looking to get long over here, but unfortunately there was just no way. There was no way we could do it. We tried and we tried and we tried, and we played with the whole thing, and then it changed directions. And so there was no way to get long, and the only trade there was over here was a short from way down here. Okay, I'll draw the trend line. See, the trend line goes, oops, that's not a great trend line, but you get the picture. The trend line goes like that, and it's a down close below the trend line. Um, it's coming together again right now, like that. Okay. Yeah, bearish divergence. You could still take that there. The gold that I mentioned a few minutes ago, right here, 29.2, dropped all the way down to 26.7. That's $250 a contract, and it's still going. A down close on this bar would be a continuation trade. Right there, 26.4. All right. Um, all right. Let's slide that off. Let's go to the copper. All right. I'm not going to look at markets that I didn't trade this morning. I'm just going to look at the markets that I did trade. Okay. Um, that 26.4 just dropped all the way down to 25.6. Okay. 25.6. That's eighty dollars a contract. In that. 10 seconds there. Um, over here on the copper, we had a bullish cross and a pullback. This up close right here, we got long on the up close of that white bar right there, and we took three ticks profit on that trade. Um, we had another opportunity over here. I took four ticks profit on this short trade off the BBC. Um, that And that was it for copper for us. Okay, That was all we had for copper. There were more opportunities here in the you know, during the during the break, there were more opportunities. There was another long opportunity right in here. Um, we didn't put in a close above the swing, so I wouldn't have taken this one. But this one right here, we sure would have taken. Okay. Um, that is it. That is it. That trade over here from 26.4 dropped all the way down to 25.5 in just a couple of seconds. There. That's ninety dollars a contract on gold. All right. Um, Today is Thursday. There's a partners meeting tonight. If you are not currently a partner and you want to get into the partners meeting, you must become a partner. If you don't know how to become a partner, send us a quick email at support at cfrn.net. Just say partner info in the title and we will get you all the information you need to become a partner. If you are a partner, obviously, I just reminded you there's a partners meeting tonight. If you have anything you want us to go over in the partners meeting tonight, send it to us ahead of time if you can so we can be a little, little better prepared for it. We would like to get started right at 9 o'clock tonight, and we would like to finish before midnight tonight. But you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll answer all the questions, as we always do, and we'll go as long as we have to. Um, all right. That's it, guys. I'm going to wrap up the recording here so we can get out to Mike.